Hey there guys, Noah here, and welcome back to another Vanguard discussion video. Today, I'll be going over the results, really particularly briefly, of the Kingslayer cards, uh, both standard and premium event, this past weekend. Um, I want to start by saying that this video probably took longer than necessary to actually get out, and that was just mostly because um, I had stuff going on at the time, so my bad. Uh, but honestly, I was kind of thinking that Fuzzy was gonna do one of these infographic like pie chart things eventually for this event uh, So I kind of also wanted to wait for that as well um, Also, I also had another video planned uh, But the audio kind of got messed up midway through and I also don't feel like trying to bother to reorganize it. So oh Well, I'll just show you the clip of the actual poll that I fucking got real quick. Take a look okay, up next Got more deleters, more Dudley support, uh, crit trigger for liberators. <laughs> oh my fucking god! I gotta go get these sleeves. And without that, you know, it was it was just you could tell from the audio that it was just not like no matter how much video editing I tried doing. It was not going to come out great. Um, who knows? You know, maybe I'll be able to get another box in the future and hopefully pull the fucking uh, thing saver Legion Rare in the future. But without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start with standard. So we had total, mind you, both of these events were top 16. Five Magnolia, three Flagbur, two Gravidia, one Prison, one Barrow, one Nirvana, one PBO, one Overlord, and one Zorga. And honestly, I'm actually not surprised by the fact that Magnolia had so much representation. Um, and it's just simply because Inlib Pulse hasn't been choice restricted yet at the time of, of the event. Um, so, yeah, honestly, it doesn't surprise me. But honestly, the biggest thing out of all of it is that Flagbird came first. Um, and I'll try to... You can find the deck codes pretty much out there if you know where to look. But, really, I think it, it, it's just crazy to me to see that, you know, Flagbird dicks so well considering the fact that it really didn't get a whole lot of support, but I think the support that it, you know, it already has is honestly carries itself. I also do think that Flagbird is definitely a sleeper. <laughs> like, I think people, like, don't recognize the fact that it is, like, really good because back when it first, like, was a thing, um, nobody really gave a damn because they just said, Oh, there are a couple cards we can take into Magnolia, bet. You know? But honestly, like, the Flagberg lists, honestly, are very spicy, so definitely go check them out. Um, even the PBO and Don't lists are honestly, like, really shocking, to be honest, you know? You, you would expect Gravidia World, you would expect, um, you know, the Prisons, the Barrows, the Nirvanas, but... Then we get Zorga, which honestly is more of a it's it's definitely more of a western pick than anything else um and i know there are a ton of zorga players especially here in florida so like you know it really doesn't surprise me that there was a zorga that topped so yeah that's pretty much all for standard but now let's move on to premium because now i have a lot more to say about it now we move to premium and oh my fucking god like the 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 premium stuff was honestly really fire. So, what came in top 16 was three Royal Paladin, three Shadow Paladin, two Narakami, two LJ, one Genesis, one Grand Blue, one Order Bugs, one Aqua Force, one Tachis, and specifically, and probably the best deck out of all of these, heads down, Spikes came in first. Like, at, from the immediate, like, top 16, like, not, like, after that, but honestly, Spikes was like absolutely fucking disgusting. Like, I'm pretty sure King Slayer is gonna cover this deck profile extensively, so please go and follow them on all their socials and whatnot, because they will definitely be most likely covering it. Um, assuming you haven't found the list already, and you could just see that it's, you know, you really wouldn't think that Spikes would do well, but here's the biggest thing: their new stride absolutely breaks the deck in half. Uh, mostly because you have the stand trigger that allows you to go wombo combo and then you also have a, gen a whole bunch of other just generic V support that makes the deck like very fucking cancer like I'm pretty sure I, I 
you know, Marshall could tell me later. <laughs> uh, but I'm pretty sure that he was able to pull off like 12 attacks on me at one point, and that was just Jesus fucking Christ. Like it, this deck is honestly really fire. Like it, it's so nice to see like something refreshing as Spike Brothers come as uh, come out of the limelight like this. You know, kind of makes me wish I teched it hotly, honestly, because like. Oh my fucking god, that's hysterical. But yeah, honestly, this 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 list was honestly very solid. Um, as for the rest of the stuff, like, it was kind of obvious that Narakami was going to pop up. But then, only one Order Colony, I could kind of understand it because people are trying to learn how to play around it. But like, yeah, like, it makes a total sense. And then, a crap ton of Jewel Knight representation. Um, I know for Shadows, there were two Luar and then one Raging Form. Um, so, like, honestly, not surprising at all, you know, Kodrick and, and one other person that I, that I fought in the actual bracket, like, pretty fucking fire, and Crow taking it all the way with Raging Form makes me want to play it again, um, but, you know, we even got two Link Joker, and honestly, those, both of them are, like, messiah lists, so, like, very freaking solid, no chaos, I will say, though, there was a total of eight chaos players, and two Messiah players, and the two Messiah players made it into top cut. Like, like, like I get they were trying to deal with order bugs and spikes and all these other different decks, but like, damn. Like, I didn't expect LJ to suddenly just rise in popularity because, you know, it's not like their stride and their G guard were that good in comparison to everything else, but like, I guess it was enough to put them all the way to top cut, I guess. Uh, but it's just nice to see that there's there was a lot of clan representation for this, and you would expect that. Um, you have a lot of outliers, sure, but like, honestly, like the representation within the top 16, very solid. Like, it, it was just great. Um, <laughs> and notice the part how I haven't said that my Luard list did not like that. And notice the part that how I said that. You know, the Luard lists and the Raging Far Fall lists, you know, that actually did top. Um, I was not one of them. <laughs> I was playing Luard and I got absolutely bodied um, after the second round. Um, yeah, it was just not a good time, <laughs> let's just say. Um, I got two wins and then that was that. I had two really good tiebreakers, you know, between both the Spikes player and the Raging Form player. Or not the Raging Form player, the Lu one of the Luard players. And, uh... It was just, I, I I could have very easily made it into top 16 if I played a bit smarter and if I wasn't so focused on one strategy in particular, but <sighs> say la vie, at this point it's whatever. Um, but yeah, like, th this event was honestly really fucking amazing. Like, honestly, extremely well run. And I want to point out for both of these events, for standard, there were 60, no, not 68, there was... 86 people participating in the event and for premium there were 70 let that sink in 70 people for premium i i like i think that's better than most of the events like at spring fest like and some of them like combined like when you look at that you know you look at the representation you look at like how many people were actually there like it was honestly a great time like i'm I'm technically like still recovering from there, um, from all that this past weekend. But honestly, it was just a great event. Like King Slayer has gotten consistently better and better every single time hosting these events, and it's just great to see. You know, and in, in, you know, look at person. Um, the only unfortunate thing for me is that I didn't throughout the last like year that I've been playing at these events. Um, and even beyond that, back when it was called Golden Phoenix, I did not get a single top, whether it be top 8 or recently top 16. Um, and I know there is still Crow's Nest, um, but simply put, I am not going to be able to make, that, make it to that event. <laughs> um, it's just a multitude of different factors currently going on in my personal life, enough to a point where I kind of have to watch what I do now. <laughs> so I'll go into specifics. I won't be attending Crow's Nest, which means that I won't be able to cover the um, Invitational at any point, um, but it is what it is. I, you know, playing in this tournament series, it just comes to show that, you know, the Southeast has the best premium players, like, without question. Like, you can't go wrong with that. Like, 
Georgia and Florida, you know, it, they have some of the best premium players that you could probably find, period. Like, sure, you have, you know, up in Europe, you have Team Cardiff, you know, taking almost every single BSF out there and coming in first or within, at least within the top three. But, like, or not Team Cardiff, or, like, just Solemn's team in general. Like, <laughs> you, you may have those players up there, but, like, honestly, nothing beats Florida. Nothing beats Georgia for me, personally, as in terms of, you know, the competitive atmosphere, you know. Especially considering, you know, Kingslayer's the best of three. It was just, honestly, a blast to, to actually participate through all these. And, uh, yeah, this is definitely one thing I will most definitely miss you know, going forward, um, but yeah, I'm gonna get up out, thank you guys so much for checking out the video, uh, thanks in large part to Kingslayer Cards for hosting the event, I had a great time, and I know a lot of other people did, and until next time, this is Noah, and I'll catch you guys later, Bye bye